Honey, is this thing on? Hello? Is there anybody out there? Oh, that's kind of catchy. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and lady, ladies and gents. Wanted to welcome all of you here to this April 2012. And the world didn't end at the end of March. But stay tuned. It may end soon. No, there was this thing that they were going to crash the system at the end of March. But then they say it, that they were going to delay it again. Now why they keep delaying, I don't know. But I will tell you that... The delaying is actually giving you some time to prepare. Now, they is getting ready to contradict themselves. How are they going to do it? Gas prices are going up in the winter time. Why? It doesn't go up in the winter time. Why? Because they're devaluing the dollar. That's right. It will no longer be the world reserve currency. Ladies and gentlemen, we figured out why our international, no, sorry, our style money orders were working. You mean they weren't working? No, they were working. Well, you mean they're not working anymore? No! I mean that they're still working, and why don't you just say that? You see, this is what I have to deal with, people. All right, our style money orders. We just called it that. I mean, it didn't really have any other meaning than it was the way we did it. We saw everybody else doing acceptance for value, return for value, credit the same, exempt from levy. People, you don't need to do that. Why? Go ahead and look at your money order from the post office or international money order. And take a look at any of them. Do they say exempt for levy? Do they say accept it for value? Return for value? Credit the same? So if they don't have to do it, equal protection of laws says you don't have to do it. You see, the law has to be equal for them and for you. So if they can do it, you can do it. Keep that in your mind. Hold that in your head. Now, that doesn't mean that if the police goes out there and they beat up on some poor old man who's just got a cane who just stepped out of his car, <laughs> you can't do it because that old man might be Mr. Stinkmaster. And y'all know who Mr. Stinkmeister was, don't y'all? Any Boondocks fans will know about the end moment. Just to give you a little heads up. So just be careful about what things you try to do. Because if they do something illegal, it doesn't mean you can do something illegal. So stay within the system. The only way you can defeat your opponent, no dying enemy, or know your opponent. What do you mean? How do you get to know the system? Well, first you have to understand that, like in the Matrix, episode three, revolution. Okay? Take a look at the conversation that they are having as a group with the key master there. They just talked about the building and how they're going to enter the building and they're formulating a plan because they are about to infiltrate the system and they speak about the system that all systems are still based on the very same foundations as other systems and they spoke about how the building was based on the very same principles of other buildings electricity and so they figured they shut off all the electricity and then they could manipulate the system well ladies and gentlemen the pay to the order of the United States Treasury and pay to the order of the United States of America without recourse on mortgages 
was one way of infiltrating the system. We're now utilizing their system to cause ourselves a little bit less stress. And did you know that information that powerful was given to you freely? So people, don't sit back and say, well, I'm not going to try what he did. I know the law, right? He put the law right there on his video, but I'm not going to try that. That seemed too simple. How can you just sit up there and write down, pay to the order of the United States of America in all capital letters, period, without recourse, in quotation marks, and that pays off your bills? That don't make no sense. It's called an endorsement on a bill of exchange, which a promissory note is a bill of exchange. Please go and reread the Uniform Commercial Code, Article 3, under promissory notes, and banker's acceptance, and bills of exchange. And you'll see. Now, unlike most of you, what I did. And I'm not saying for y'all to do what I do, okay? Because what I do, I know what I'm going to say the minute the fools come up to me and say, Sir, do you know what you did was illegal? I know what my response is going to be. Sir, did you know that you sent us a piece of paper that just ain't, ain't, ain't legal? I already know what my response is. I've already anticipated their ignorance. You haven't. So don't follow me. Take the information. Do your own research. Well, you haven't told us where to go and do research. Because I'm not supposed to tell you where to go do research. It's not my job. Ladies and gentlemen, all I'm doing is talking into a microphone. I'm not teaching anybody anything. I'm not an instructor. That's why I do these little seminar things every once in a while. The one coming up in Ohio at the end of April this month, 2012. We'll have more on the venue and the dates next Tuesday. Okay? Okay! Let's get back to business. So we don't want you following what we do. We just want you to be aware of the methods that we employ. Why? So that you can take and assimilate it to your own method. But what if we don't have a method? Then I suggest you go get one. You see? That's the problem with you. You always got to be smart about things. Would you expect me to be dumb? You see, that's... See? All right. Now, back to business. Ladies and gentlemen, some people have tried to suggest that I should be able to help them with their very small problem and all they want to do it's mentioned one little small itty bitty teensy winny tiny thing to me if I could just spare them a moment and so I have to tell them hey <clears throat> no I don't care if it's only going to take you five seconds to explain your situation I don't have that type of time I just spent 43 hours, I, I added it up, working on one document for somebody. Sorry, folks, I'm a perfectionist. Okay? And that's not consecutive, but in a week's time, it's like a full-time job. And no, they're not paying me to do it. <laughs> so... I don't have time because I have a life. Many of you go to work, come home, work in your home, and do your other business. Some people have made it a choice of theirs, the ones who I still allow to have my number, to call me on Sunday night. 
to call me on Saturday night, to call me on Friday night, Wednesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Monday, and let's not forget the last one. What other night is there? My night. But that's not a night of the week. No, it's my night. Every night is my night. It ain't Miller's time, it's my time. And I keep trying to tell you all that I don't want to talk about this 24 hours a day. That I'm talking about it all day long with one person or another because we're trying to figure out things for you. And so, people are not calling me, for the most part, to give me information, which is what's my hope, is that they would be trading information and I would provide it to you all. No, most people are calling me because they want my input to help them with their situation. Now, I, I told one person that I refer to myself as a paradigm. Paradigm. Y'all know what a paradigms are. 20 cents. Well, anyway, I told them I refer to myself as a paradigm and an enigma. Well, guess what? When I look at myself in the mirror, that's all I see is those two words coming together. I'm not bragging. I'm just speaking what is truth. And I love truth because why? The truth cannot be manipulated. The truth stands by itself, for itself, and on itself. Can people misrepresent the truth? No. But yes, they can misrepresent the truth, sir. I've seen people do it. No, people can sit up there and fool an idiot. That's a harsh uh, Okay, somebody who's ignorant. Uh, well, th- 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 that that word is almost just as bad, sir. Well, if a person is ignorant, meaning they have ignored knowledge or lack knowledge, then that's not a bad thing, because not everybody knows everything, including me. I know it's surprising. So, what I have had to do is recognize that some people won't understand. And we have a small little parting gift for all of those of you who don't understand what's going on here with these videos or at the redressright.org website, okay? We have a small little parting gift. Uh, grift, <laughs> grift, uh, Professor Griff. Anyway, um, the doggy McGruff. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, our small little departing gift to all of those who can't understand what my mission has been from day one to give. <laughs> to my fellow man not what he wanted me to give him but what I would expect him to give to me to do unto others as I would want them to do unto me that's all this has been about is giving and I've given and I've given and I just can't give no more who was that that said, I've taken all I can stand and I can't stand no more? Was that not Popeye? Y'all remember Popeye? I remember Popeye. I couldn't stand that stupid cartoon. All right, let's get back to the money order, shall we? So let's let you know what we realize. In our last couple of videos, we told you that the Wells Fargo Bank N.A. National Association paid towards the account using these, these, these money orders that you see in front of you. And what did they do, sir? They paid the account at a hundred and thirty-one thousand dollars based on two instruments written for over six hundred, no, excuse me, seven hundred and twenty thousand dollars. No, six hundred and eighty. See, I'm I'm having a hard time with my math right now. No, seven hundred thousand uh, dollars. Two twenty plus four eighty. Seven hundred thousand dollars. I was right the first time. Okay, why did they do that? Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's blow it up. We told you in the last video, but we gonna blow it up. Oh, you done blown it up, sir. That's nasty. All right, here we go. 
Do you see that right there? To be applied to the principal, not interest. Oh, let's, well, on the website, we'll update this later today. Okay, not an interest-only payment. I, You know what? We're just going to put a not an interest payment. Uh-uh. We're going to take this. Come on, Mo. And we're going to put this word right here. Now, that's a word. I know it. I know it doesn't seem like a word, uh, but it is a word, okay? Now, words can consist of one letter, but names cannot consist of one letter. That's right. The name of a person may not consist of one letter. Got that down. All right. So, to be applied to principal, not a payment on interest. Okay. Let's make this a bold statement. A lot of people don't know what a bold statement is. It's not a statement where somebody, you know, just sat up there and flexed his muscles. No, that's not what a bold statement is. This is a bold statement. You know how you make it a really bold statement? You do that. You put an exclamation mark. All right, now, let me tell you what we did. When we sent those items to them, we couldn't figure out why what they take one of these items which some people were being told that's not a legitimate item but we have never been told that by any facility none of these have ever been returned okay now we've had them never credit the account in some occasions but we always keep a copy that's why we do it on a computer and that's why we back up our files you don't want to go through what I just went through First, I lost 480 gigabytes worth of videos. Then, after losing 480 gigabytes worth of videos, I lost a one terabyte worth of information on a hard drive that failed. Why don't you start it up on the internet? Because if I lost 480 gigabytes and then another one terabyte worth of information what does that tell you about the amount of upload time while tethering to the internet oh well why don't you go to a Wi-Fi hotspot or do it at a friend's house so that it will take four to five days and I'll be without my computer that long or my external hard drive I don't think so okay it's just not gonna happen just wouldn't be prudent getting back to the money orders all right so our money orders because this is our style money orders this is going to be probably one of the final updates on how we do the money order because a lot of people weren't understanding it and then we kept doing video after video uh, well i don't see those videos up i said look for the ones that says our style money orders but there's so many videos you have up there you have almost 200 videos on your site ladies and gentlemen we're going to take this moment away from the audio and the video so that we can thank some of you. Those of you who have been faithful watchers, faithful followers, we appreciate your loyalty. And I assure you, I must insist that you understand or stand under or get this simple point. Our job is not to mislead you or to provide you misguided information. We will not do as some sites do, tell you something and not provide you the reasoning behind it. We're going to let you know the reason why we do everything, so at least you can have an idea. You know those sites that leave the best part out? You know the part that, that's the last piece to the puzzle? Y'all Yo, know the puzzle I'm talking about, the puzzle you've been trying to figure out? And they are keeping to themselves, but they'll charge you for it? Again... These money orders have worked for us. We're not charging you so that we can do these for you. You send us your information and we do it for you. We're not doing that to you, are we? No, we're telling you exactly what we do so that you can do it yourself. We even provide document templates 
at readersright.org forward slash PDF. They're called All Star Money Orders. By the time you watch this video, they're already up. As a matter of fact, they were put up maybe an hour ago. So they're already on the site. You just have to look down the list to Treasury Money Order, Federal Reserve Money Order, and it has today's date. Letting you know they were just updated. Okay, so once again, taking a little short break from the video, we want to thank all of you. We do appreciate the fact that you appreciate us. The Legal Redress Commission, a debt collection agency. All right. Well, shouldn't we call it a debt correction agency? Oh, I might just do that. Getting back to the money order. The first thing we did is we put a name. Brett Jones. Why? Because that's the name of the account holder. Then what did we do? Bond number. What bond number did you use? The one on the birth certificate. Really? Where is the bond number on the birth certificate? It is usually a number that is in a different font, either at the top of the document, the base of the document, or the back of the document, in a different color than the rest of the document. But what if you have a copy? Then it will not be in a different color, but in a different font, larger than all the other numbers. Oh, and that is known as a bond number? Yes. Why? Because birth certificates are created on bond paper. Hey, thank you. I needed to know that. I didn't know that birth certificates were on bond paper. Ooh, so you mean it's a bond instrument? Exactly. Interesting. Okay, now, what's the difference between the bond number and the birth certificate number? The birth certificate number will be in the plain black, and it will be right there, usually about 10 digits long. Really? Yes, but some birth certificates don't have 10 digits, so just put the number of the birth certificate. You don't really need the bond number. Well, if I don't need the bond number, do I need the birth certificate number? No. Then why do you put it on there? Just to do it. Nike time, just do it! Okay, so birth certificate number and bond numbers are not necessary. We just add them, people. We're the guys who load up all the buck shots and the shotgun and load the barrels and have at least 48 rounds in the clip and 48 clips in the round. That's what we do. And then we fire all missile tubes at one time. Why? Because we're dang sure gonna hit something. And that's what we're trying to do. Hit something. Pretty much the target. All right. What's next? We make it a conditional acceptance money order. Conditional acceptance? That's right. We accept any and all offers under condition. Well, what are your conditions? That they negotiate this item payable to the order of the United States Treasury. It's supposed to be via Capital One. Via. Somebody told me the other day, via. Via Longoria. Uh, no, this is via. I'm from the dirty south Los Angeles. So I'm from the west coast. And we do via out there. Just like there's a street in Los Angeles called, and Santa Monica called Sepulveda. But the actual pronunciation is not Sepulveda, is it? No. What is the actual pronunciation then, sir? Seplavida. Seplavida. That's correct. Look at the word. It's not an English word. Hmm. Okay. That makes sense. Back to the conditional acceptance money order. We give each money order, each money order must receive its own separate money order number. Your money orders do not have to be a 20 series long number, a 15 series long number. They can be a 5 series long number, 4 series long number, 2 series long number. It doesn't have to be as long as mine. This is mine. Now, every money order, pay attention. See this one right here? That one ended in 512, this one ends in 514, and this one ends in 1515. Okay? Every money order must have its own separate number. 
if it doesn't and you duplicate it and you send out another item with the same number on it, that is called fraud. And you can go to jail for fraud. Why? Because fraud is against the law. You didn't have to be so serious about it. But it's against the law. But yeah, but you... And then there must be a line where it's paid to the order of the United States Treasury. And we don't have to put VIA here. We don't need VIA or Viva or anything. No, we don't want to do backslash. We're going to do definitely forward slash. Capital credit to Capital One Bank USA NA account number. And whatever the credit card number is, because this was reported on a credit report. Okay? So we're paying Capital One Bank. The amount, two thousand four hundred forty five dollars and eight cents don't forget the eight cents this has to be written out you can do it in all caps all lowercase doesn't matter you can do it by hand you don't have to do it on a computer but it has to be a line underneath it's a courtesy line okay this number has to be in brackets or in a box why because it's a courtesy box that's what it's called this must be on the account this must be on the uh, money order this must be on the 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 money order and this must be on the money order so let's do it one two three four five six seven points of reference it's usually five but to keep you from running into headaches as to which one of the five out of seven you must have on your money order let me help you understand money order number is essential signature line is essential courtesy box for the amount is essential written out courtesy line is essential and date is essential one two three four five now if you have a signature line you must acknowledge who you be which is usually the same as that up there or administrator we're now putting on our documents administrator okay so let's put that here Okay, administrator. Now, when we do the, we're going to minimize lower case, make it smaller. That's right. This is how we do it. All right, now, let's give them a forward slash because that's what they need. Let's get to the next point. If you do another check to the same company, you just change the number up one or up ten I usually give each one of the accounts a ten digit so if I was gonna write the next one to um, my utility company I would bring this up by ten so that number would start 522 for the utility company and so on and so forth alright so that I don't make the mistake of crossing numbers in other words doing two numbers of the same thing you definitely don't want the men in blues to come to you and say hey you use the same money order number for two of your outrageously erroneous money orders come here with us you don't want that to happen now take a look at the dollar amount usually we add another line we put two lines but you don't have to this is customary and commentary that's all it is, the commentary people. To be applied to the principal, not a payment on interest. And then we have our signator line, executor, beneficiary, grantor. We can get rid of all this down here. We don't really need this. We just put that because it was below the line. But you don't need it. You can basically do what I'm doing now. Where is my get rid of the line thing 
I said get rid of the line. There you go, no more line. Account name, Brett Jones. And what's the account number? Uh three four two two eight nine eight seven two. Is that a real account number? Is that your social security number? No, that's not my social security number. That's just some stupid number I just typed into the computer. And if it belongs to somebody else, I'm sorry. Then we put payable to the United States Treasury. We could put payable to the United States of America without recourse. It doesn't matter. Okay. Without recourse. Because we don't want anybody recoursing us. Mm -mm. Nope. We just want them to course us, but never have them recourse you. Whew. And then it must also contain a memo section. Acceptance of warehouse receipt is paying down continual reoccurring balance to Capital One Bank USA in a continual reoccurring balance payment. Why? Because some places like to turn off your whole account without telling you. You're kidding me. Yes, I am kidding. Uh, but I would never kid you. <laughs> you can't kid a kidder. Oh, Lordy B. Alright. Now, this is the United States Treasury routing number. This really is their number, so you don't have to copy it from anyone. Then we put this right down in the place where the account number belongs. Must be processed manually. Account number listed above. People, do yourself a favor. Those of you who are doing EFTs, that's right, the most significant EFT update to date. When you're doing EFTs, right there at the bottom of your EFT is a spot for the account number. On mine, I have literally wrote hand input only. That's right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the account number right next to that. And I'm going to... Sorry, I leaned on the mute button. I'm going to write it out. It's... Not on there. I have a check book from Bank of... Uh, is that Bank of Africa? Bank of Africa. And they are the people who I had my account with. Got to plug in. All right, I haven't... My wind generator went out, and they're supposed to be sending me another one out today. I got to call these people before I leave here. But I'm down on energy here, and I didn't turn on my regular generator. I don't need to. I got enough sunlight today, but we got a storm, they say, coming through today. Ladies and gentlemen, let's finish. Then we put the date. 3-5-2012. We just wrote it backwards because that's the way the Treasury does it. 3-5-2012. Forward, backwards. Do you have to do that? No. Do you need to do that? No. Why don't you have to do that? Because it's already here. Really? Yes. Okay, that's it. So now we get rid of this one and we say, uh-oh, we changed something. Yep. Oh, we already copied that. Let's make sure, because I may have copied something else. I've been doing all this talking. All right. Copy. Now we go, yes. All right. Now, what money order is this? Our style money. This is just a regular our style money orders. Now, please understand it says the same thing as the other one, just, just a different check number. And information right here, the only thing we're going to do, because we put three of them up there for a reason, not your reason, our reason. And then we got to move this boy. Because he too, uh-oh, get out of the way. He too close. Okay. Now, what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get rid of something else that we don't need. And that's that. Okay, because we don't need it.
and we're going to leave this one as is and you see treasury money order number already done 3 5 2012 okay that's the second one this is just a regular hour style money order the first one was the treasury money order what's this one here folks this one is the United States Federal Reserve Bank money order really there's an actual United States Federal Reserve Bank money order that you guys have done how come nobody else knew about this because we wanted to keep it a secret oh y'all just so devilish and devious what's wrong with you people okay so now go here go here ladies and gentlemen here is the Federal Reserve money order what are the differences in the Federal Reserve money order well let's go through them step by step everything up here remains the same the name the bond number the BC number birth certificate number the money order number changes because it's a different money order secondly do we do do we do we do we do we do we okay I think that was Malcolm in the middle wasn't it anyway uh, pay to the order of the United States Treasury credit the same to Capital One the date continue acceptance money order everything you see how it all keeps the same format to be applied to principal and not a payment on entrance in interest excuse me entrance <laughs> what is an entrance it's where you enter sir oh well I'm not trying to enter nothing you sure I'm positive how can you be positive and then be sure I'm positively sure okay we're gonna leave that that big for now don't feel the need to change it hey everything's everything's peachy hunky dory as a matter of fact let's do we're gonna do some changing we're gonna do no spacing normal normal then we're gonna do resize it to eight then we're gonna we're gonna change it to this one and then we're gonna bold face that you're a bold face liar you should never call anybody a bold face liar just call him a two-faced liar but never bold face bold face might actually get mad at you for telling someone that they're almost like him all right now we still make it payable to the United States Treasury we put the routing number for the Federal Reserve Bank which routing number is that well on the back of your Social Security card you have a number well not everybody's Social Security card has that number so okay look ladies and gentlemen if you don't have the number then we're not talking to you this is only for those people who have a Social Security account on the back of the Social Security account is a letter A B C D E F G H I J K L M P or well, L okay there is a total of 12 with those numbers you take the first letter you go to our website and what you look for is Federal Reserve routing numbers and you find the routing number for the Federal Reserve Bank that correlates with your Social Security card and you put that routing number here uh oh mouse not working right you put that routing number there okay must be processed manually account number listed above you see how simple that is now they have no other choice but to input it manually and you don't have to tell them uh, do not ACH do not blah 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 do not blah 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 but you can blah blah without blah 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 oh y'all y'all heard the intro with the mm-hmm's and the mm -hmm's? well that's where that stupid stuff come from all right so ladies gentlemen gentlemen and ladies our style money orders and the newest update we haven't even done this yet that's how new it is just came up with the idea and we decided we were going to tell all of you because we figured this is what went on now you see this in red you don't leave that there okay but this is the account number you're going to utilize that's on the rear of social security card now I put SSN card because some of you will understand what that is if I just put SS card you're gonna be Hitler's dead sir you see what I mean he believes in swastikas and that's the type of people I have to deal with so that's why you see that there 
this is our cover letter it's the top of the page now we go to Walmart Walmart and we buy what's known as fancy paper okay and on that fancy paper we give it to the proper address and we send it to them now we took this directly well this is not directly these numbers have all been changed around but we took this directly from a credit report and sent it to them have a coconut smell now have Capital One paid off this account no they sent it to collections so it was collections that paid it off yes it's been so much fun understanding their system so ladies and gentlemen gentlemen and ladies ladies and gents thank you for visiting us here on this April 2nd 2012 sunny but cloudy afternoon some people said they saw my neighborhood it's not a neighborhood there are no neighbors it's just the hood oh he's from the hood okay so I want to thank you all for sharing the time and taking the time and spending the time but now I don't have no more time I'm running out of time take care of yourselves stay safe have a good day good night good afternoon good week good morning and have a good weekend y'all keep it real now oh, well if you can't keep it real